Welcome to Good Enough with the Trauma Therapist, a podcast dedicated to empowering you to take control of your life, learning valuable strategies for healing and looking at mental health through a trauma-informed lens. Get ready to feel empowered and confident in managing your symptoms. And now, here is your host, licensed clinical social worker, EMDR therapist, and certified clinical trauma professional, Jamie Vollmuller. Welcome to Good Enough. I am your host, Jamie Vollmuller. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about growth and change. And there's this really, really corny joke in the social work field. I was going to tell you guys, it goes, how many social workers does it take to change a light bulb? I'm going to give you a minute. It's one, just one, but the light bulb has to want to change. I thought that was hilarious. I know it's really corny, guys. It's fine. But it's important because I think a lot of times we see parents or spouses or friends, well-meaning family, like encourage or almost strong arm their family members into or friends into therapy. And therapy is a really beautiful place where change happens. But but the key there is that the person has to really want to make those changes. And a lot of that is because change is really hard. Going to therapy is, is self-care for sure. And you learn way more about yourself and your patterns. And you learn to set good boundaries and you learn good coping skills. But to put into action what you're learning requires you to want to make those changes. Because even if it's something as easy as, well, for me, boundary setting is now pretty easy, but it wasn't always. Something as easy for me as as just saying like, no, I'm really sorry, I can't do that project. I'm overloaded at work. For some people is ridiculously anxiety producing, right? Especially people who were raised to believe that they are responsible for everyone or that their uh, worth is measured by their productivity or what others think of them. And especially women in our society, I think, you know, women women have it really hard because we, you know, if you're a stay-at-home mom, then you get slack that you don't work and, oh, your husband pays all the bills and what a privileged life you have. Girl, I was a stay-at-home mom for six months. It is rough. And if you work, you know, if you're a career woman, I work, I run a business, I run two businesses, then you get a lot of like, oh, so you never see your kids, right? So everyone always has these assumptions, no matter what you're doing as a woman, that that you're not doing the right thing, you're not doing enough. (laughs) And when we're socialized in that way, it makes it really hard for us to prioritize ourselves and, and put ourselves first. But it is so very, very important to put yourself first and be willing to take a hard look at your life and make those changes. Uh, it's a really big reason that I, like we are what's known as the blunt therapists, the L-U-N-T, uh, because we call people out on their stuff. We're not going to co-sign on your behavior. You know, we have a lot of clients that come in that'll that'll feel really, really hopeless and they they feel like everything is beyond my control. Everything at work is horrible. My family situation is rough. I, you know, my mom's sick and my kid's getting in trouble in school and all these things are happening that are outside of my control and I'm just overwhelmed and there's nothing I can do. And and a lot of the times people feel that way. And in my life, I have definitely felt that way. Like everything is just wrong. My life is Murphy's Law. And no matter what I do, I'm going to be stuck in this not so fabulous situation. But there is big change that happens when you start making the changes. So if you have, you know, been overextending yourself for the parents and the kids and the friends and at work, what tends to happen is we wind up like, I I called it yesterday, vibrating zombie. So let me explain that vibrating zombie to you guys. So for me, vibrating zombie is kind of like my anxiety literally makes me feel like my body is, is vibrating. Like I'm at a higher frequency than the rest of the general public. 
I'm just way more easily triggered. It's just how my brain's wired. But when I'm not taking care of myself, I'm also like on high alert, but but going through the motions. So I'm not really mentally present. And even as a therapist in my own life, like recently, things got really, really rough in a couple places and I fell off the self-care wagon and didn't go to the gym, didn't see my friends. And it was just really, really hard to get back on. But what I had to look at was, what am I doing? What do I have control over? And uh, how can I make my life better for me? And a, a large part of that comes with just me being like, no, I can't do you that favor this weekend. You know, I'm really sorry, but I, I'm i going to go to the gym this morning and, and you can go to the gym later, hubby. It's just taking that two hours a week for me to go to the gym and once every two weeks going to see a girlfriend, even if it's just hanging out with them and their kids, that's a really important self, part of self-care for me and sleep. And because my life became so chaotic, I was really not getting sleep. I was not able to go to the gym and I just kept telling myself I don't have time, which is a cognitive distortion because when you are taking care of yourself, it does take time to do that. But you are so much more present and focused and centered, at least in my experience of myself, my my friends, my colleagues, my family, my clients, to, to really engage in what's important in your life. And if we're not taking that time to put into ourselves then we run around like vibrating zombies. So you're on edge all the time and you're going through the motions. You're not really present. So you're home with the kids, but you're on your phone or in your head or not not really there. And when I give myself that two hours a week to just go to the gym and make sure that I switch on and off with my husband in the morning to get that extra hour of sleep and we rotate it, I feel so much better and I have so much more energy to do the little things like the laundry and the dishes and the, you know, play, even just playing outside with the kids and like really being engaged, like running around with them in the sprinkler and being a crazy mom, which they love at two and four. And it just makes my life feel so much richer and the people around me also begin to change and, and calm and and not have a lot of the same of their own patterns, especially my kids, because I'm calm, so they're calm. So I'm essentially changing the environment. And that can happen at home. That can happen at work. And I say this to my clients all the time because it, it really is a mindset when you get into that. I'm hopeless. There's nothing I can do. And sometimes there's not a lot you can do to change your immediate situation. Like if you are in a bad home situation and you don't have the money with your current job to move out, yeah, there might not be something you can do immediately to rectify that and get yourself out of that situation. And it can feel really uncomfortable and painful, but you can, you know, work on going back to school. You can work on finding a better paying job. You can work on your budgeting skills and saving your money and finding other hobbies so you're not out of the house so that you're you're mitigating your time in that environment so it's less of an effect on you. And when we start focusing on what's in our control and what we are choosing to do, whether you're choosing to stay in a relationship that doesn't feel good for you or choosing to chronically overextend yourself to make other people happy at your own expense, those things are within our control. And when we stop doing them and setting boundaries, though it is ridiculously scary, because most of us are afraid, oh, this person's going to be mad at me. They're not going to talk to me. You know, it's going to be difficult and you probably will get pushback. We've talked about that on this show before, but you will feel so much better and the people in your life will also begin to benefit and see the results of those changes. Uh, you've been listening to Good Enough. Please stick around after the break. Thank you for listening to Good Enough with a Trauma Therapist. This is your host, Jamie Vomeler. If you live in the states of New York or Missouri, we'd love to work with you. New Yorkers, give us a call at Long Island EMDR at 631-503-1539 or visit our website at liemdr.com. And for those of you living in Missouri, 
please call Brave Counseling and Psychiatry at 573-825-6441. Visit brave-mo.com. Welcome back to Good Enough with Jeannie Vollmuller. Today we are talking about growth and change and how change can be really, really difficult. And I think that the desire to change is such a crucial part of whether or not you know you're ready for therapy. And that doesn't mean that if you're not like, yes, definitely, I want to make all the changes right now that you're not ready because there are techniques and skills that therapists have, such as motivational interviewing, that can help you get there. And sometimes you are just really, really stuck and you may want to change, but you're like, I don't have the energy or the capacity to make those changes. That is also fine. If you have some desire within you to change your life, I truly have the belief that everyone has the capacity to make changes and live happier lives. But people do have to want to put in the work for those changes. You know, you can't go to therapy every week and tell your therapist, like, nothing's happening, but they gave you homework assignments and suggestions and things that you were supposed to do outside of the therapy room, and you don't complete them and say, nothing's changing. Well, you know, we're not there with you on the outside when Aunt Jody makes comments at, you know, family dinner that upset you, and you continue to bottle it in and bottle it in and bottle it in. (laughs) until you finally explode. You know, that's a big change that a lot of my clients have to work on when they first start therapy is just learning to be assertive. And assertive just means that you're able to state what you feel and what you need firmly. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to give an attitude. It doesn't have to be mean. It's just, hey, I really need to take off in two weeks, I have a wedding coming up. You know, I'm sorry if that's going to impact things at work. I will do my best to uh, mitigate any disruption in my time away. Please let me know what you would need me to complete before my vacation, but I'm going to take this vacation. That is just straight up assertive communication. I'm sure not at every job can you be that direct with your boss, but it's an example. Versus, you know, aggressive and what a lot of my clients fall into the pattern of is the people please. So if people say something that upsets them and it's a minor comment, because they don't like change and they don't like confrontation, they avoid addressing. So what happens when we avoid addressing things that are causing us internal discomfort is is we're pushing them down. So what happens with a lot of these clients is people will continue the same patterns or say the same types of things or do the same types of things that are triggering to my clients. But their family or friends don't actually know that they're even triggering them because they don't say anything. They just hold it down, maybe make a face, shoot an eye at, you know, grandma to be like, "Mm, she's doing it again. But, you know, nothing is addressed. And then they hit their breaking point. It's the the straw that broke the camel's back and they fly off the handle at a tiny comment and they wind up looking like the crazy, mean, obnoxious one at the table because their response is so disproportionate. And it's not that my clients are wrong in feeling angry because a lot of these stories, and I've been there myself where you just ignore, 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 and then you hit your breaking point and you're like, why are you treating me this way? Like that is totally valid. But what's also valid is the other person can't change their behavior and not trigger you or even work on not triggering you if they don't know what they're doing is bothering you. And and that's why like learning how to communicate, learning how to be assertive and making even really small changes of just when Aunt Jody makes that comment that like, oh, it looks like you gained a little weight after the baby. <laughs> you just shut it down and go like, yeah, I really prefer we not discuss my weight at the dinner table and Jody. And and move on. Like you need to say something. You can't just let things go and let things go and let them build up because it does affect how you feel about yourself. It does affect how you feel about that person. And then little things that if you were setting boundaries the entire time or even having that conversation with that person, like maybe if you approached Dan Jody privately and said, like, hey, it really bothers me when you make all these weight comments. Like, you know, 
can you just not do that with me? You know, maybe Aunt Jody would open up and say like, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm just insecure about my own weight and I say it all the time. I'll work on it. Oh, you're beautiful the way you are. And that would resolve a lot of your feelings of anger or resentment or frustration towards Aunt Jody. And the next time she makes that comment, you'd correct her still, of course, because we're setting boundaries, but you wouldn't explode. You could maybe shoot her a look and a reminder of like, Remember, we're working on that. And then she'd probably apologize. So even other people's behavior isn't in our control. But how we respond to those other people, how we manage our emotions when other people make us feel or do things that make us feel or, or think a certain way, addressing them a lot of the time can really help to repair the relationship and make you feel heard and understood. And I find that a lot of my clients, their biggest gripe, either at work or at home or with family or friends, is that they don't feel heard and understood. And when we really get down to what that is, why that is, it's usually because they struggle to communicate what they really feel and need. And some of them really don't even know what they need, especially if they're in those hopeless situations or feeling like they're in that hopeless situation that we talked about earlier. You know, I've had clients that have said, you know, my spouse asked me last night, like, what do I need in this situation to feel better? And that's a spouse trying to be supportive. And, you know, they didn't have any answers, but they don't have any answers because they don't have any insight because they're, they're running away from what the deeper issues are. And that is why I'm so passionate about, you know, anyone who's really struggling with where their life is or their communication, their relationships, uh, how they feel about themselves, going to therapy because it can really help shift your whole mindset. And when you shift the way that you see yourself and you see the world, it really begins to have a ripple effect on your life, like on the people around you, on who you surround yourself with. So sometimes people are brought up in really, you know, depressing and negative situations and the people that they're surrounded with aren't necessarily the most positive people. Their family might have some toxic traits. Their friends might not be into the best things, you know, and because this is what they've always known, they stay including themselves around these negative people and they don't expand their social circle. And that could be because, you know, they have social anxiety or they they don't know how to even be themselves. I've worked with plenty of clients, especially clients that were parentified children, as we call them. So a parentified child is someone who from a young age had to take care of their siblings for one reason or another. Uh, individuals like that especially tend to have a really hard time knowing who they are as a person because most of their life, their role, their core being as a human has been to help and take care of other people and put other people's needs first. Especially individuals like that, like life is just so much more fulfilling when you begin to live a life that's motivated by what lights you up and what makes you happy and learn who you are as a person instead of walking around like a chameleon. And being a chameleon isn't bad. I am not trashing anyone who has that tendency because it is truly a survival skill. Uh, A lot of my clients are will say they feel like they're different people in front of certain people, but that's really because They know that if they're around their dad, that they have to be way more uh, positive and encouraging and just like never complain about anything. And if they're around someone else that's a negative Nancy, they'll like go into the gossip, but they will basically do whatever they need to do to make the other people around them feel heard, understood, and like they are on their side to avoid getting that negative backlash. Um, And those are really hard patterns to break. So if any of this resonated with you, we would truly love to help. All of our clinicians are very interpersonal. We will definitely help you work through it. We will not yes ma'am you to death. And we will give you the tools and strategies you need to start feeling better. I want you to remember that you are good enough. Thank you for listening to Good Enough with the Trauma Therapist. 
We appreciate you listening. While our host may provide some personal and professional advice, we want to remind you that this show is for entertainment purposes only. Each individual situation is unique and good enough is not a substitute for mental health treatment. If you need a therapist and are located in New York or Missouri, feel free to reach out to us at liendr.com or brave-mo.com.